Hello, hi friends. Today we will discuss about solubility. What is a solubility? And what are the guidance or reference given in the pharmacopoeia regarding solubility? And what are the factors which are affecting the solubility? And what is the importance or application of solubility in the pharmaceutical industry or any other industry? Without any delay, we will start our session. What is a solubility? Solubility is nothing but the ability of a solute or a substance which dissolves in the solvent. One more, one more definition. The, the a measure of the maximum amount of solute that can dissolve in a solvent to make a saturated solution at a given temperature and pressure. And the definition, the ability of a substance that may be liquid or solid or gas which dissolves in the solvent that may be solid, liquid or gas to make a saturated solution at a particular temperature or pressure is called solubility. So this is the definition part. Is there any guidance or reference about solubility? Yes, there are few guidelines. US Pharmacopoeia, EP Pharmacopoeia, British Pharmacopoeia, Indian Pharmacopoeia, they have given a brief description about the uh, solubility in a descriptive manner in their general notices. Let's start. We know solubility is nothing but the mass of solute in gram per mass of solvent of 100 gram of solvent into 100 means suppose you have taken a 10 gram of sodium chloride in water is nothing but 10 percent of sodium chloride solution suppose you add some more quantity then it becomes saturated solution then you can say suppose 15 gram is required to saturate uh, prepare a saturated solution of sodium chloride that 15 percent is called a solubility of that sodium chloride with that concentration okay let's see guidance they have given simply, if 1 gram of solute requires to dissolve less than 1 ml of solvent, then we can say the substance is very soluble. If 1 gram of solute requires 1 to 10 ml of solvent to dissolve, then we can say it is freely soluble. If 1 gram of solute requires 10 to 30 ml of solvent to dissolve, then we can say it is soluble. If 1 gram of solute requires 30 to 100 ml of solvent to dissolve, then we can say it is a sparingly soluble substance. If 1 gram of substance of solute requires 100 to 1000 ml of solvent, then we can say it is slightly soluble in soluble in that medium. If 1 gram of solute requires 1000 to 10,000 ml of solvent, means 1 liter to 10 liter of solvent, then we can say it is a very slightly soluble. If 1 gram of solute requires more than 10 liter of solvent, then we can say it is a practically insoluble or insoluble substance in that medium. Okay, we discussed about solubility definition and guidance reference given on the pharmacopoeia. Now we'll start about the what are the factors which impact or affect the solubility. There are three main factors affecting the solubility. One is the nature of solvent or solute that we take in for solubility, and second one, the temperature, and third one, pressure. These are the three main factors to affect the solubility. Let's start. Nature of the solvent or solute. Suppose we know polarity, one of the chemical property, polarity, and uh, you see, we know like dissolves, dissolves like, means polar will dissolve in polar, non-polar will dissolve non-polar. For an example, if you take a urea, urea, if you take a urea in water first, urea is a highly polar and very polar, water also highly polar solvent. It will soluble, highly soluble, it will highly soluble. Suppose you take this urea in methanol, then it is fairly soluble. Suppose if you take this urea in benzene, it is insoluble. Means urea is a polar, benzene is a non-polar solvent, so insoluble. Let's see another example. <laughs> Suppose if you take naphthalene, Naphthalene water. Naphthalene is a non-polar substance. High water is a highly polar. It is insoluble in water. Insoluble. Suppose you take the same naphthalene in methanol. It is highly soluble. Suppose you take say you take the naphthalene in benzene. It is highly soluble. Means non-polar soluble, highly soluble non-polar solvent. Let's see what is the impact of temperature on the solubility. This is the property of thermodynamics. Suppose if you take one soluble, suppose suppose calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxide in water. 
Here, dermatic property is nothing but whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic or isothermic. Based on that, we can say temperature effect on the solubility. Suppose you take calcium carbonate, calcium with water, dissolve in water, then some heat, heat will generate, heat will release. Suppose, at that case, suppose you apply some external temperature, then solubility will be decreased. To take another example, ammonium chloride plus water, then it requires some heat from external source, means it will absorb some heat from surroundings to dissolve and soluble. Here, suppose you have applied some external temperature, heat, then solubility will be increased. Another case, suppose if you take sodium chloride in water, in this, it is an isothermic reaction, neither gain heat or neither release heat. Then, suppose you apply some temperature to this solution, the solubility will not be have any change, means remains same. Now we will discuss about pressure. What is the effect of pressure on the solubility? Let's take one example of gas in liquid case. For an example, you take your soda water or soft drinks. In this, you see what is there in this? Our, we are dissolving carbon dioxide in water at high pressure. Suppose you open one cool drink bottle cap, then what will happen? The pressure will be decreased, the gas will evolve or open, the carbon dioxide will go off. Means when decrease the pressure, solubility will be decreased, when increase the pressure, solubility will be increased. So now we discuss about what is the solubility, what is the guidance they have given the paramotopia about solubility, what are the factors which affect the solubility. Now we will go to the last point that is very much important point. What is the importance of solubility in pharmaceutical industry or any industry? It is a basic requirement to know the solubility of a subset to synthesize and develop a molecule, new chemical entity or a drug substance or a drug product. And it is very useful in our analytical chemistry, analysis and separation of mixers. And third one, it is very important to do a analytical method validations as well as cleaning validations, equipment cleaning validations. And it is a primary, it is a primary uh, Parameter to know the solubility of your substance or product to fix the solvent or reagent to clean the equipment. And one more important point is a very important pharmacological activity of the drug product or drug substance. Suppose your drug is highly soluble in water, then you have to give a small doses also enough to cure the problem. Suppose your Pharmacological so API or drug product having a highly insoluble or insoluble water or organic solvent, uh, this water, then you have to give more doses to act on the uh, problem to mitigate the problem. So, uh, and it is very important to get the accurate results in your analytical analysis. Means maybe instrument analysis or chemical analysis is very important. If your if your substance is not dissolved properly, not soluble properly in the solvent, then you cannot get a accurate results. So this is a uh, about solubility today's session. Uh, I hope you all are watching my videos. I have made three videos already. One is pharmaceutical analysis, and second one is data integrity part one, and the third one is voice investigation. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. I will make a number of videos in future. Uh, please subscribe my channel if you like uh, click on like and uh, click on bell icon to get my all updates instantly and please forward to your colleagues and friends pharmaceutical wherever they are working in pharmaceutical industry they will have some knowledge thank you thank you for watching have a nice day happy learning thank you